is that the problem after divorce is loneliness. My dad, you know, he was part of this big Indian community. That will change a lot of people's lives. Like in the arranged marriage situation, after the first date, it's like, if you like her, then you're getting married to her. If you don't, what? then you're not. That's how it is. I wish I knew about this back then. Darshil, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so excited. You were first a Dating Decoded student and you had such great success in the program that you have become one of our newest coaches. And I think that you can help not only New Yorkers as you're, you're in New York and you're just mastering the dating scene there, but I think you can also really speak to men who may be coming out of or being pressured into arranged marriages because I know that you are in an arranged marriage for nine years. And we were talking a little bit about just the experience of coming out of that and like, what do I do? And I would just love to learn more about your story, how that all felt for you. And, you know, obviously you have figured it out now, right? You, you had a great, yes. uh, a great strategy, a great program, but tell me more about just like how you were feeling at that time. And like, if you could share any, tips with men who are in a similar situation sure so let me uh let me get back to all the way you know before i got arranged marriage you know what my what the process was and i think a lot of people probably a lot of indian men and women probably they they could they can relate to this it's you know usually you know when you're you know when you're 25 between 25 and 30 you know i mean they try to start looking for you know uh, a life partner for you, right? And they usually do it, you know, you know, by asking friends or the community, you know, going in the Indian community, saying that, hey, you know, my son or my daughter is single, so I'm looking for uh, a guy or a girl, right? And then, uh, so then, you know, they, they start getting, you know, proposals that, okay, you know, here's a person who's, you know, that we are trying to look for a match. Um, and, uh, then, you know, you, you basically start getting, you know, their contact information, you know, their phone numbers and, uh, you know, you, you basically, you talk to them, you know, see if you like them or not. Sometimes it's not even, <laughs> you know, you don't even talk, but you know, it's, I mean, you do, but you know, it's pretty much kind of pre-matched and to a lot of extent when that happens. Uh, you'd realize that the person that they're trying to match is either in a different town or city. So it's mainly, even if you're trying to know that person, it's mainly like a long distance kind of relationship that turns out to be. Mm -hmm. um, not to say that obviously there will be, there might be someone local, but sure, you know, you go and you meet that person, you know, if you like them, then, you know, both the families meet and then they, they're like, okay, we, you know, the guy likes the girl. And then they give like probably three months and then, you know, they start putting pressure to get married. Right. So you actually don't get time to kind of see and date and like, see how things are going, you know, kind of really evaluate your other options, right, which are, which are out there. Right. So that's what happened to me. You know, yeah. I mean, my, my dad, you know, he was part of this big Indian community where he met, where he made a lot of friends and, uh, you know, he kind of found, you know, one of his friend's daughter who was cute and was like, hey, you know, she'd be probably a good fit for my son, you know, for, to, you know, just a, just a thought. And then when I went back to India and you know, when I met, you know, when I was there, just like, just on a vacation. And then, uh, so I met her, I met, you know, the friend's my dad's friend's daughter. And uh, I kind of liked her in the beginning, you know, the it was just the first date, right? And then after I came back, it was just, they actually just made up in their mind that, okay, this is the girl and you're just gonna get married. To her. Hmm. So, you know, it's, it is very, it feels a lot pressure that way. And, you know, sometimes parents also emotionally blackmail. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're like, you know, uh, he's a good guy, you know, it's a good family, good background. We already know how they are. You know, we've already seen, we already know the people, so it will be a good fit. You know what I mean? And then, and then you're so young, you know, you're like 23, 25 at that point. And, you know, you obviously you trust your parents with they, that 
you know, like, okay, they are thinking good for me. And then, you know, that's how I got married and a lot of other people too, you know, and, and, uh, you know, not only that, but once like before getting married, I also like, you know, that was like a six month period that I had when I was like, just kind of know her a little bit more. We had, we had already engaged like between the engagement and getting married. Mm-hmm. Um, I did feel that, okay, I'm, she's probably not a good fit. Like I felt mm-hmm. that, initially. but the problem is I couldn't pull back because, you know, they're like, oh, we have already made the preparations for the wedding. You know, everything's there. Hmm. And, you know, my, my family is like, oh, this is how you feel when you get married, you know, you feel nervous and it's just a nervousness, yada, yada, yada. And so, so that's how, and then you're like, all right, I'm just going to go, you know, think that's how you feel and you get married, right? The, the problem here is that you don't know how to date. Yeah. Right? The, the, the biggest problem here is, is the lack of knowledge, right? Like they don't teach you in school how to date, right? Like there's no dating one-on-one class that, okay, what am I supposed to go and do on the first date? You know, that meet, meet a girl, right? Like what questions am I supposed to ask? Uh, what I'm not supposed to ask, you know, and not only that, like what to do after that, right? Like in the arranged marriage situation, after the first date, it's like, if you like her, then you're getting married to her. If you don't, what? then you're not. That's how it is. So it's, it's very, you know, the arranged marriage situation after the first date is very like, okay, you jump straight to marriage, right? But no one teaches you that, okay, how to like, you know, after the first date, how to go on, you know, go on the second date, what to do on the second date and, you know, how to go about the, go on the third date, what to do in between the dates, mm-hmm. right? How to communicate, how not to communicate, right? And, you know, all the way to courtship, right? So those are like the steps that obviously we learn at MLS. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I, before, obviously I, I wish I knew about this back then. When I was uh, when I was 25, uh, you know, it would have made a whole lot of a big difference, right? And and I and the thing is, like, I also don't blame parents for like or people that put pressure mm-hmm. uh, because you know back in the days there were no dating apps. They never went through the whole process of dating apps. We didn't even have smartphones, mm-hmm. and that not even cell phones when they were dating when the parents were dating. Right. That's how they got married and they got they got to know each other. Right. So they think probably so they use the same method, you know, the same method to kind of use when they want to get their sons in marriage. Right? Mm-hmm. But and the other thing is, you know, now they know that there are dating apps out there, but, you know, they associate some of them associate like apps with with hookups. You know, they're nothing, you know, not something serious that. Okay, you know, it's just, you know, you, you can get hooked up on, on a dating app, but not that, it, not in a way that you can find a long term partner or a husband or a wife. Mm-hmm. Right? Because the problem is they have not seen that piece that, okay, it's possible. Yeah. Right? Which is what we teach at MLS, right? And that is how where we help our students. Um, so, so that I think is, is the, is one of the biggest problems there. For me, going back after after that, you know, I was I was in marriage for nine years. Uh, I literally, even though things were not working out, I you know you try to make things work out, and convince yourself, and then and at the end, I did get divorced. And then you know after that, I actually had another rebound, uh, like you know, which turned into a relationship. But that too, I didn't go out and date. That I just met her through a friend. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we kind of hooked up and then, you know, things kind of felt and you know, it was more like a rebound. So my problem there at that point was I didn't know what to do. I, like after the divorce, like I had no idea what to do. Like now what am I supposed to do? Like, okay, if I go on a dating app, okay, you know, I go on Tinder, I get hooked up. But that's about it. Like I'm, you know, I'm, I want to go and restart my life with a different partner, right? With, with. Yeah. With the right part yeah right and how about how, how do i go about this process where, where you know uh, there is how do i find the method to this madness right mm-hmm. and that's 
like after I broke up with my ex-girlfriend, you know, the one that I had a rebound, you know, I actually sat down and, and uh, I was like, okay, you know, this is the problem, that same problem I had 15 years ago, which is when I got arranged marriage, mm -hmm. is I didn't know about how to go with the selection process, how to, how to date a woman, like even what to do on different dates. And I'm right here 15 years later, again, in the same boat in the same problem, mm -hmm. which is lack of knowledge, right? And even after getting the knowledge, lack of action, right? Mm -hmm. So those are those are two things. So 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 the first thing is, okay, I need that knowledge. And that's how I came across envelopes. Mm -hmm. You know, I looked other dating coaches and then, you know, I kind of felt like envelopes was very promising. And yes, and I kind of I learned a lot. Like this is something that I wish, I wish people teach this in school, so that, so that when when kids come out, you know, at twenty three or twenty four, you know, they know what mega dating is. You know that you, you know, they don't have that one tightest or single minded, you know, mindset that you know going with one person and just dating that. No, no, you want to date multiple people at the same time and see what is work, who's working for, you know, what's working for you, right? Who right. is your ideal girlfriend or ideal boyfriend, right? Out of that. And that is how you make, you do the selection process, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and that, I think if that happens, oh my God, you know, that will, that will change a lot of people's lives, uh, yeah. you know, early on and, you know, to help them make, make proper decisions proper life decisions you know yeah. so absolutely so yeah that's 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 something you know and for me obviously after after joining emlas oh my god i dated i probably went on like 100 150 dates <laughs> you know just yeah i stopped counting after a while yeah and yeah now, now i teach people and i'm the coach and helping people I love it. Yeah. So for anybody who's watching who maybe doesn't know what mega dating is, mega dating is the process of going on 20 dates in 90 days to compare and contrast enough partners to really make the right decision on who the right one is. And sometimes people will go on more. Actually, this idea came from my 100 date experiment. So some people like Darshil and myself are crazy enough to go on 100 dates. And you know, it really helps you to see problems in your selection process that you will just keep making that same mistake over and over if you you don't compare enough people quickly enough because if if you're dating let's say you go on a bunch of dates with you go on 20 dates you're like man it's really weird that i'm attracted to people who treat me poorly like what is that about and then you can correct it or why am i you know why am i not attracted to the person who's like so perfect on paper but i really like the bad girl or the bad boy you know you can correct those things so that you can have a healthy happy loving relationship so if you were to give advice i'm going to mm -hmm. ask you two questions if you could give yourself advice the, the you that's 24, your parents are talking about this arranged marriage. What advice would you give to yourself if you could go back in time as the older version of you? And what advice would you give to your parents who are trying to arrange this marriage, knowing what you know now about how that, how the outcome turned out? First of all, I would definitely, you know, talk to them about that, you know, things have changed. Now, obviously, you know, it's not that going on dating apps is just, you know, getting hookups and, and that, you know, you can, I would explain them what a mega dating process is, right? That, you know, this is where you date, you know, where you go on 20 dates in 90 days. Not only that, probably, you know, even more that, you know, if you want to go. Um, and so that you have options to see and compare, uh, you know, what kind of woman you or maybe you might not even know what you're attracted to mm -hmm. right and it's a way for you to put put yourself out there to see you know you know what you're liking and you know what you're what you're attracting yourself to uh, right and so i would i would definitely say one thing to the parents is you know maybe they maybe they feel pressured from their friends but you know not you know just eliminate that pressure element in that's in between uh, because uh it's a process it's not an event you know 
Yeah. Or like arranged marriages is more an event where it's like after a first date, boom. All right, that's it. You know, let's get engaged. You know, that's an event. But mega dating is a process that no first date and you go second and third and fourth, you know, 90 days, 120 days. Like you have to put in the work, right? So, so that which gives you a better uh, outcome and um, it is much more satisfying emotionally. And you will be able to know if you can actually stay with this person. You know, you actually get a chance to see that if you can stay with this person, even if you had to live in with this person, how it would be, right? Like, for example, if, if arranged marriage is like, for me, my, after I got engaged, I was actually doing some long distance. I was here and my, my ex-wife was in India. Mm -hmm. um, so I was doing a little long distance relationship uh, kind of thing. So the problem there was, yes, it was good that if I went there, I met her, you know, we had a great time, like those three days or, you know, five days. And then I came back, but we never got a chance to see how we would, how it would be if we lived together. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a problem with long distance, you know, so, so with at least with mega dating, you know, at least I got a chance to see that, okay, you know, if you were to live together, you know, I'd be tried, you know, kind of, you know, staying together for a week, you know, see, you know, working from home together, you know, doing different things, brewing groceries, you know, cooking, you know, you know, all, all other errands, like running, doing different things. So you also get an idea of how it would be if you were to live together and if this would work. You know, yeah. so that, so you also have, so that element is also important. So yeah. yeah, that's, that's what I would, I would say. I love it. Um, and I know that you went through not only, uh, you know, obviously an emotional transformation and, and a mental transformation, but you went through a physical transformation Yes. and I would just love it. If you could share your thoughts, if you could talk to the self, like, what was it? Two, three years ago that things were very different for you. Yeah, yeah, two, yeah, two, three years ago, and actually, like, they were very different the the minute I got out of divorce because then it's like, okay, what am I supposed to do now? And it's a phase of depression, right? Yeah, I mean, every divorce is different. You know, some are like, okay, mutually they just understand and it's done. Some, you know, take a year. Some takes two and a half years, three years, depends, right? So it's it's a very depressing process and frustrating and mentally, mentally not great. Right. So obviously you're in a depression, then you, you know, you don't, you start, you don't take care of yourself. Right. You know, you forget to take care of yourself again you like eat healthy or like, you know, like I became to a point where I became an alcoholic. Right. So I was drinking every day, just, you know, and, you know, going to the bar, Every day, just an excuse to get out, just, you know, just to feel better. And yeah, and then, you know, after that, you know, even after my, my breakup with my ex, that I had a rebound and then, which was like a fear relationship. Even after that, I was in the same boat again, as I said, and okay, here I am, the same boat, now what to do? And I'm drinking and then I'm not eating and I'm not taking care of myself, right? So I, I, I heard someone say, I over you. Like, you know, that's the equation. And I was like, okay, what do you mean? It's like, you come first. So then what I did was I was like, okay, I need to like make sure I'm, I'm healthy in three ways, mentally, emotionally, and physical, mm -hmm. right? And spiritually too, if you're spiritual. But so yeah, so I started first by taking care of my health because health, health is well, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, even if I had to go on another 150 dates or 200 dates, you know, I, I need to be healthy to go there. Right. So, so yes, yeah, so I started working out healthy, uh, you know, taking care of myself a lot, uh, you know, got back in shape. I was totally out of shape and yes, yeah, so I got, you know, I got personal trainers and nutritionists and uh, tried working out, which is what even we have at, at MLOVs, you know, we have, um, you know, personal trainers who can, and uh, nutritionists who can create meal plans and, you know, give you a workout plan. So you can also not only work from home, but also to work out from home, but you can also work out at the gym, you know, whatever the preference is. 
Mm -hmm. And that, that kind of make, you know, gets you back in shape because, you know, there is, you know, there is physical attraction is important, right? Uh, for any person to even to be in the relationship right? to maintain that relationship, you need to be like physically attractive too. Yeah. So, so I started, I focused on that and obviously I started doing therapy, try to get myself mentally stable through, through a lot of therapy. And, uh, then Emma was dating. That was another therapy. That's, that's a different therapy, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, then, oh my God, I just, I learned so much, not only about dating, but intimacy as well, mm -hmm. you know, different aspects, you know, I, oh my God, I literally, I, I think the last time I had taken a number from a girl, from a woman would be when I was probably 23, 22 uh -huh. at a bar and that too, you know, just chatting with her, but then you know, all these 15 years, basically that nine years of marriage and then this three years of, you know, this relate rebound kind of relationship and these different gaps. I never went out and got phone numbers. I mean, because I didn't even know what to say. Sometimes you don't even know you know, what am I supposed to say? Like, you know, okay, I'll go with those cheesy pickup lines that I can Google online, but they don't work. Yeah. You know? So, uh, so then I'm like, so I didn't even have the confidence at that point, right? And then I learned a lot of in-person training, got a lot of in-person training. And now I can just take numbers from a girl walking on the street, probably. Amazing. Yeah. So it's, it's just at a different level now. And now I know if at all in future in my life, if I'm in the same situation again, I'll get out of there get out of it like this mm -hmm. you know i will not be lonely again hmm. i love that because the the problem after divorce is loneliness yeah. and that's what is a little vicious yeah kind of vicious yeah. yeah and one of our core values at m loves is that we hope to cure loneliness for our students so i love that that you feel like now you have a process where if you're ever in a situation like that, you know exactly what to do. So yes. if you could go back in time to two, three years ago, what would you tell yourself to get, you know, so that you knew that you could get through it? What would I tell myself though, so that I can... Like, what advice would you give yourself? You're you're like, you know, kind of feeling like at the bottom, mm -hmm. you know? So, it, so for a man who's watching this, who's like, man, I just got divorced. I'm so lonely. I do not know what the hell to do. I've never seen a dating app before because back when I was single, they didn't exist. What would you tell him like to feel like he could have some hope that life will change for him like it did yeah. for you? Yeah. No, I mean, one thing is I'll tell that tell him that is is to definitely keep the hope, you know, and take take one day at a time. You know, it's it's possible. You just got to make sure you keep, you just do the next right thing. You know, that's all you need to focus on. And, you know, you want to first, you, you definitely want to, if you're not taking care of your health, your physical and mental health, that is, you should take that as a priority. Yeah. You know, if you're not eating well, you know, if you're not working out hygiene, what have you, whatever the issue is, that's something that you should, you know, go out and fix and, and, you know, get that and get it into your as make it as part of your life mm -hmm. and also you know not saying that you have to go ther therapy but like if you're if you think you're depressed or you're not getting not being able to get out of it then sure try you know try therapy and, and see if that works for you and yes definitely as far as dating oh definitely you know i mean i'd rec i'd highly recommend them to kind of start you know probably if they can get get to MLOs, you know, take advice from you. That that is the best thing that they can do, and and it's possible. It is it is very possible. It's just that at MLOs, because at MLOs we teach you like it's a step by step guide on how you can actually you know get to where you want to be. Right? Where because right now, as in a situation where you're divorced, you feel that you're not being loved and you know you're missing that but you deserve to be there yeah you know 
you are that person. You you deserve that you are a smart person. You're, you know, well, maybe you're a very good looking person. You know, all of it, you have everything. So, you know, you, you deserve to be loved and it is possible. It's just that it requires a little bit of effort and just need to put in a little work and it'll make a huge difference. I love it. Yeah. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story with us. I think, you know, you're such a role model and that's why we wanted you on the M Loves team because you just did so well in the program. It was such a pleasure to be a part of your journey and get to witness your journey. And now I think you're just such a great coach on the team and like everyone loves working with you and you're so inspiring. And, you know, I think it's so special to share this story because I think there's a lot of people who are in that same position that you were not only three years ago, but also like, you know, 15 years ago or whenever, you know, when you were young 20s and, and a lot of people, both the parents of, of these kids and the kids themselves, like they don't really necessarily know which path to take. And we get a lot of students in the program who are like, my parents are trying to arrange me. I want to see if I can find it on my own. And to have the confidence and the knowledge to feel like you have agency over your dating life, mm -hmm. I think it's so important, you know, and, and hopefully if you are in arranged marriage, it works out great, but wouldn't it be nice to have that experience so you could really recognize holy cow, that is a winner. Like dad and mom got it right, you know? Yeah. But if we have no experience, we really don't know. And that can yeah. cause problems down the line that that impact not just ourselves, but our families. And if we have children, it impacts the children. And, you know, our friendships suffer, our career suffers if we're in the wrong relationship. There's studies that show that our health suffers. Obviously, I mean, you, you know, you're an example. Like these things that, that happen to us when we make the wrong decision, don't have to happen to us. All we have to do is have enough experience. And I always say like, would you buy the first car that you drove on the lot? Or would you yeah. buy the first house that you walked into in an open house? No. Would you go to the first college that you just found, like that sent you a mailer in the mail? No, you're, you're going to be strategic and thoughtful about those decisions. You probably won't take the first job that you inter interview with and they might not take you either because it's a process of figuring out what is right for you. And right. you're, all of us are unique individuals. So we really have to like understand ourselves on such a deep level to even make that decision. So right. anyway, thank you for sharing your story, Darshil. Anything, any final thoughts that you want to add or tips that you want to give? No, I think I think I, I said it all, like what I had written down, you know, for the, for the most part. But one of the tips I would say is obviously not to feel pressured. You know, it's not that it's a process is what I said. And it's it's... One thing is about building the confidence, you know? So one thing where people are right now who have, who have been, who have, who are in the situation that have been divorced, you know, their confidence is very well. Mm -hmm. And we do a lot of confidence training in, at M Loves, so which is very important for you to not only succeed in dating, but even with career and, you know, other aspects in life. And, and that's where I think at M Loves, it's not only a dating program, I would say, it's more of a self-improvement program, mm -hmm. right? And, and where you're working on your health, you're, you know, you're working on you know, the mental and physical health and your emotional health and, you know, making sure that you have your priorities, right? Like you don't, you, like you have to make sure, you know, your career and your other things that you have in place are your priorities. Like maybe you're divorced and have kids, right? So, you know, you, your, your kids are a priority, right? you know, but so you kind of learn to recognize that as well and, and manage yourself and improve yourself. Yeah. So, yeah. I love it. I love it. Well, yeah. thank you so much, Darshil. It's such it's a awesome, pleasure man. chatting with you and learning more mm -hmm. about you. And, and I'm just so happy that you're a part of the program now as a coach, too. I think it's great. And I know. I'm you. like, I'm very, uh, yeah, I'm very excited, especially with uh, with the women's mock dates, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you want to just share a little bit about that if there's a woman watching? <laughs> yeah. So, um, and M loves, I'm also uh, doing mock dates uh, with women. So, you know, the same same situation where you know a lot of women that you know either were starting out you know maybe in their 20s 30s were trying to see what's out there you know kind of date 
or women that have gone through a divorce and, you know, don't have that confidence to kind of, you know, go out and feel nervous to go out on a date and don't know what to say or what not to say. You know, that's where I come in and have a mock date with you and, you know, train you to build that confidence and, uh, and that swag. <laughs> to to go out there and and you know be the best version of yourself yeah um, i love it so, so yeah so i think yeah. i'd be i'd be happy to help all these women you know find their ideal partners i love it yeah so we do on both the men's and women's side of the programs we do mock dates and what that is is like a virtual date where you at the end of that date you get a scorecard that tells you how you're doing in terms of your conversation skills, your flirting for men, sexual escalation, your grooming and presentation, really just how you're being received by the opposite sex, because we really don't know. So if you find like, man, I keep going on first dates, but not making it past the first date and I don't know why, or I keep getting friend zone and I'm not sure what's happening or these people don't want to commit to me, we can really figure out what's going on for in a mock date, we can we can pinpoint problem areas because the people that you date aren't going to give you feedback like, oh, by the way, like you had a booger, you know, or like that's usually not what it is. Yeah. But oh, my God, you talk about work the whole time or you're talking about yourself the whole time. You know, they're not going to tell you that they're just not going to see you again. But in a mock date, we get to give the feedback that really helps our students improve. And Darshal is one of those people who does the mock dates. So. Um, so good. And then we also have women who do mock dates for our men, which is awesome. Yeah. So if you're, if you're watching this, you're thinking uh, you could use a little support, a little step-by-step -step framework for success. Definitely check us out at M loves and Darshil is one of our great coaches. So if you resonate with his story, he can definitely help you out as well. Thanks so much for being here, Darshil. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. All right. That wraps up this video. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you like this video, make sure to like it, subscribe to the channel, leave us a comment in the comments below and follow us on social media. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll catch you next time.